so, you kids ready to do some science that may or may not assign someone to eternal suffering? I know I am. Welcome back to Journey Beyond the Abyss. Yes, I think the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to get that little experiment going. Because we're kind of close to the end of the chapter, and it's nice to just get things... If we're going to make something, we might as well make something before things advance and things might get more difficult. So, let's grab one of these stacks of bricks. And let's examine where we were in the process. Uh, yes, we were making tons of refractory bricks in order to advance on that front. So, I'm going to need 16 of these bricks in total. I'm just going to need 20 more. And just one more pulp. Nice and easy, just like that. And then 16 iron. For a moment, I was like, we're running low. No, we're not. <laughs> okay, now 12 more iron. And we might be running low on cobble. Yep. Well, that's easy to remedy nowadays. Yes, now that we can cart multiple stacks of things around at a time without needing to slow our roll on our way back, it's, it's very nice. Now the only thing that's lacking is my storage system. Not being able to handle the loads I can carry anymore. Let's just put that on the chisel. Let's not bother with the fancy pants. Hello, chisel. Really? I guess that iron is really heavy. Yeah. Well, fancy pants it is. That's better. They're still building things. That's good. Still lacking for that church. Maybe that's another thing I should do today. Build the tailor's workshop. It wouldn't be too far out of the line of what we're already building. It's essentially just another workshop, and we've done that dance before. We know we can do it fairly swiftly nowadays. I should also probably build some proper Tinker's weapons before I end the chapter. Yeah. I have some ideas for what I want to do for that. In any case. Let's just put this away. Where'd the other one go? It's in the chisel. Put that away. And let's not sleep through the night. Yep, let's just not... Well, first, before I do, let me check the Sunwell mine. I don't think I filled out the Sunwell mine. So let's turn on F7 mode and make sure that the hole in the ground is... Yeah, that needs a bit more safety. My apologies, I know torch placing is the most exciting of content. And to start our video off with it ensures that everything else in the video will be disappointing by comparison. But that is just the cross we have to bear. I can't help it that this awesome responsibility falls to me so early in the video. But yes, with that, hopefully all our trouble spots are filled in. I'll have to check the other mine too. I think that might have been why monsters were occasionally appearing there. They were crawling up out of the hole. Yep, yeah, it looks like this one's already covered. Excellent. Well, it better have been because it's so close to the base they would have just come up and said hello. Alright, so. Next up we just need to turn it into furnaces. And that's going to require 20. Easy. 
already got that. Furnaces. And let's, yeah, the fancy pants are empty. I don't know why I call these the fancy pants. These are by far fancier. I guess, well, no, they both have a modifier on them. These have diamonds. Anyway, anyway. Melter. That is what I am making. And first part of that is seared heater. So tons of these bricks, two flint clay, a bit of liquid clay, which let's just pour that out. And just easy as that, we'll have this done in no time. Ah, yes, it's time to cycle the pit burner too. Let's get rid of some of this tar bale we've been making. Dispose of a little bit of our wood tar. I think the wood tar can be re-extracted from these. Yeah, in the in a crucible. It's even a one-to-one -one ratio because one thousand goes in, one thousand comes out. It just costs a little bit of fuel to do the processing. But right now, charcoal is a need that will give us charcoal and it will get rid of wood tar, which we have a excess of. So burning the stuff is a win-win. In any case, over into here, get, let's just make the damn hammer. Yep, let us make artisan hammer. I have said I need to make that hammer so many times, I'm just gonna make the damn thing. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's three, four, eight, ten. It is possibly, nope. It is possibly time to crush these diamonds. That is a hammer recipe. But it might be time soon to go and pick some more diamonds up from the abyss. That is absolutely no big deal. And I don't care how many durable twine. We have enough. So, Artie, Hamar, done. And there we go. So, next, the Meltar, the Furnace, the Flint Clay, to make said for nos. Good. Piece of glass for the tank. Might need more brick than this. And three, four, eight more flint clay. And there is Ah, the melter first step. Good, yes. Okay, next it's just going to need four of those bricks. It's going to need 12 of the mud bricks. I knew I was forgetting something. Okay, well, that is a very easy fix. Oh boy, we have red spots. Okay, so mark that on the map. Let's clear that out. just very quickly swim away, show off our new lovely high swim speed in the process. Oh yes, we're still wearing the full set. I forgot. And that's okay. And then hit the hay. Where is my marker that I put down? Did I hit the wrong button? It was by the sun well.
Yeah, something was appearing, like, right here by the sun well. There is... no... no spots that I can see. Hmm. Yeah, we filled this out pretty completely. Must be something that, like, spawned somewhere else and it teleported in. Let's pick up some more limestone while we're here. If the game will let me. Please. Game, stop lagging. This is actually getting scary. Oh boy, that was a bad one. What was going on there? Uh, I didn't have my F7 mode on properly. That's also a good way to test it is dig a hole. So let's... That waypoint apparently failed somehow. There's the problem, possibly. Well, it's a good thing that we have nice, easy, really cooperative testing conditions that are showing us where all the trouble spots are so far. Without killing us so far. In any case, put this in the melter. Get the ingot caster ready to go. And that'll just be jobs done, jobs a good'n. Yeah, we were out of limestone, I guess. I'm going to need four of these blocks, and I'm going to need to turn them into bricks. And I think that should be good. Yeah, that's just more... Okay! So, smelter is relatively easy to construct now. Just let those pour. Oh, it is so much less aggravating now that we can just watch this happen in front of us. Hmm. I guess while that's happening... Well, no, that won't take long. That won't take long enough for anything I start to be worth it. I just need to suck it up and let it happen. Yeah, it's already almost done. I, I guess if I thought of it first, I could have just harvested the sugar cane. That'll be my default go-to first thing, I guess, in the future. Yep, all done. And just like that, we now can smelt our get over on here. Boop. Job's a good one. Now, we are going to need... Oh, what are we going to use? I think if I'm making blood, I want to have it in a tank. Yep. So, let's make a seared tank. Good. Make us a drain. Good. A faucet. get some more brick. Uh, oh yeah, I'm going to need two tanks anyway. Need another tank for the smeltery itself. Even though this process won't be using fuel after the startup, um, it still needs a tank and it to be a valid smeltery structure, so we need another seared tank. Uh, da, 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 da. And I think that might be all the technical pieces I need at least for a prototype. Okay, so let's just uh, let's get a bucket of lava for one of the tanks just to give it a little fuel because I will need to melt one piece of rotten flesh to get the process going. Um, the way this works mechanically is, if you trap a monster, or any living being, including yourself, in a smeltery that has any sort of liquid inside of it, then they will take damage over time and generate blood in the tank of the smeltery. That is seared stone. Let's put that over there. So, 
because blood is the product that I want, blood is the product I'm going to melt in there just so we don't have an anomalous bit of extra liquid sitting in the tank. And yeah, it needs a little bit of liquid in there, or it needs a little bit of fuel in there just in order to melt that initial bit of rotten flesh to get the initial blood flowing. So next, let's just take our chisel, take a full stack of that, immediately turn them into bricks, and keep that in the chisel for now. We'll take those out as we need them, and hopefully that's enough to make us a decent sized smelter. So my initial thoughts, I, I've been thinking about this for a while, my initial thoughts was I was going to hire those NPC guards so that I could just walk them into a tank, but I had a better idea while I was thinking on it. These merchants over here, these guys respawn infinitely, and they never move from their spots except for Chunky Pudding, for some reason, who goes chasing off monsters. And honestly, some of them don't have, well, okay. I think these are all computer craft things. I might have a use for those eventually. Chunky Pudding, yeah, buying, well, he's, he's the life salesman, he has to stay. Eh, this is bionization stuff, but, no, awesome dash, obviously, but these guys, these two poor, unfortunate beta testers, this guy, oh, yeah, that's right, I gave him some water bottles to hold on to, well, he can just keep holding on to those, those are worthless, but yeah, this guy is just essentially a fancy big chest, and this guy sells some really basic bionization stuff, which A, won't be useful for me to me for a long, long time, and B, most of this stuff I can just find elsewhere anyway. So uh, yes, these two, you are the weakest link. So I'm gonna dig the floor of the smelter down just one block below them. Right there just so that uh, when I dig out this block from underneath them, they'll immediately fall down onto it. Yeah, that should be a sufficiently wide smelter, I think. And... Did all of these drop dirt blocks? That's unusual. No, only three of them. Well, three is good enough. Right there. So you just start building up the old smeltery wall. I don't like deconstructing the NPC structures. I'd like to leave all the work that was put into the world pristine, but needs must when the devil drives. Yes. This looks like some pretty good initial dimensions of a of a nice little blood manufactory. Just like so. And let's return some torches to uh, to the land. Now, if I take those out, yep, we have a nice little trench and they aren't complaining about being slightly displaced downwards in a way that they can't control. So next, let's just put a seared tank back there. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's put the controller here. And... No, I want drains on the next highest level so I can just easily pour out. So in that case, yeah. I guess just put it here for aesthetics. It really does not matter. Get some more bricks. lay the smeltery out a little bit. And once I finish laying out this layer, it should validate. Yes, you can tell if you have a valid smeltery by the controller lighting up like that. But notice that nothing is happening as of yet. 
because there is no liquid in the smeltery for them to be hurt by. But if we put in a piece of rotten flesh, it should very rapidly melt, and that should very rapidly change. Oh boy, here we go. It's working. It's working! So, the real question will be, what happens when these two die? Will they simply lay there and, and respawn? Will something bad happen? Will it continue generating blood even while they're dead? No, that doesn't look... No. That would be too much to hope for, I suppose. But they're just kind of laying there. Are they going to get up again? Come on, boys. You can do it. Oh, that is exactly what I wanted. That is the exact behavior I was hoping for with this experiment. Okay. Infinite blood is go. And you know what? I could just make this whole layer drains eventually. So then I can come up here like... This, this obviously isn't part of my base. This is more like a resource depository that I occasionally visit, I guess. But yeah, I can come up here with a bunch of seared tanks. I'll eventually have this entire layer as drains. And I can just bring four seared tanks up here and pour it out. And I'll just have lots of blood to bring home. Goodness, we're up to two buckets already. That's insane generation. Oh boy. Was that an Enderman? It may be time to run. Yep, I have learned my lessons, and with two lives, I am not going to gamble. If I hear an Enderman... If I hear any hint of an Enderman nearby, I'm going to swim away to despawn, swim back, and cycle it to daytime, because, uh... I am not getting teleport ganked. Not again. Never again if I can help it. At least not until I have piles and piles of lives. Alright. But yes, yes, yes. This is looking absolutely beautiful. Oh god, look at that. It's almost up to four buckets. So it's filled the tank in just a couple of minutes of work. Good lord. What have I wrought? Let's keep rotting it. Should I build it, like, wider than this? Like, expand it out back to here. That might be a plan. Yeah, give this thing a nice big internal tank. So that, uh... So that I can build up tons of blood. Because it looks like it stores about... Oh. It, it, it stores 18 and a half-ish buckets right now. That's... Yeah... For as fast as it's generating, that's not terrible. That's not terribly good. So. Let's at least expand it. Well, how many bricks do I have? I might have enough. Let's make some more bricks. And in the meantime, let's bring back a nice tank full of blood. And let's figure out what we're going to do with it. Oh, that's just beautiful. Free blood. Free blood forever. We can make red sand. We can make coagulated blood. Huh. We can make slime balls out of this stuff. That's potentially wonderful news. That's really potentially wonderful news. It can make really shitty food. Don't eat that. It already kind of works as a slime in... Yeah. 
We can... We have a free slime generator. Ooh, boy, howdy. Okay, okay, okay. This is even better news than I thought. Yeah, glue has just suddenly gotten much more affordable. You hear that, boys? You're making me cheap glue. Don't you feel so much better about this situation now? That's the sound of gratitude you hear. Okay, let's... Let's get this area chunk loaded if I can. What chunk am I sitting in? I guess this one? Claim, please. Yes. There we go. Okay, so if I wander out, look at the little title down here. So if I wander in, it should say, yep, owned by me. So, okay, it is chunk loaded. Okay, so, how many more of these bricks do I have? Just ten of them? I should put on another load. Yep, let's get the fancy pants. Let's put on some more seared stone on the cooker. Maybe just two stacks worth. Yeah. I think that should form another stack of seared of seared uh, stone. That's probably more than sufficient for my purposes. Okay, two of those. Let's just you oh, I can't use the chisel. So I have to get that button out of my muscle memory one of these days. <sighs> yes, need to figure out need to figure out proper ratios on all of that while my stone is melting. Okay. D -doop. D -doop. A dupe. Okay, so blued. Bloody blued. Mm, uses. So, 144, 40. So, one ingot uses 40. So, 5 would be 200. 25 per bucket. Fortunately, that molten clay. That molten clay... Yeah, that... So it uses half a clay ball per ingot. So 25 wouldn't do. It would need to be 50 ingots of iron to 25 clay balls to 2 buckets of blood. In other words, this seared tank can make 100 pieces of pig iron. Okay, and you saw how quickly it, it filled up in, like, just a couple of minutes. Okay, pig iron is, is, uh, really, really cheap. Is the story there. It, it basically only costs iron and clay. Uh, and let's see, coagulated blued. 160. Um, oh boy. That doesn't seem like it should be even. 160. 2, 3, 20. Uh, 4, 6, 40. 12, 88. 20. Let me, let me just, on the off chance. Let me, uh, da, da, da. Calc. 4,000 divided by 160. 25. Okay. So this tank that I have would make 25 coagulated blood. That's not bad. 25 slime that quickly for free? I'll take it. Okay. And yes, in order to use this, well, let's 
we we would let's and I misjudge it's only 32 but that's fine 32 seared stone is more than fine for my purposes considering I already have another 10 in my chisel or another 23 in there another 10 in the chest yeah that basically gets me back to a stack it's fine yeah and just in all the time I've been dithering it's probably completely filled up hasn't it No, not quite, but it's up to seven buckets. I guess it's slowed down now that they are in the death and resurrection cycle, and it looks like they don't come back with full health. Yeah. But still, it ain't slow. It's going up 40 at a time, so each yeah each time they're getting hit... No, no, it's going up 20. Uh, I, I, I guess one died before the other for some reason. It's 20 per each of them. So 40 per hit when they're both alive until they're dead and it's just generating free blood at a very nice rate that's the story there and that's all that matters okay uh well i guess while that seared stone is a pouring i can start working on i can start working on the workshop for uh yeah the uh, the tailor's workshop if the game will stop lagging That will allow us to make the carpets that the villagers are in need of. Yep, that is just a basic workshop with some more patterns. I think I need to make some more patterns. Yeah. For that, I'm going to need more leather. Yeah. Okay, let's see if they have any leather in stock. I remember them being really low on stock last time I checked. Ah, oh, yes, it's, it's time to check these guys anyway. Arms merchant. Lots of arms merchants passing through. Hmm, I guess I haven't got the memo that this place is mostly safe now. Mostly. You know what? Those arms merchants are welcome. Yeah, let's... Give the old cow farm a visit. See what they got. They don't got much leather. Is there any easier recipe for leather? I could put steak on the drying rack so I can effectively... That is a tinker's drying rack, so... That's a reason for me to mass create those. Just get a nap in here while I'm in the area. I need to remind the villagers that all the beds they build are in fact mine. They just think they own them. And you know, this is an excuse to finally make a uh, refractory oven. It is that, sure. I might as well have all the refractory devices sitting around in my base. Because, yeah, I, I would want to use the refractory oven instead of... Uh... Okay... No. Arms merchant, nourishment merchant. They really are reluctant to spawn that one merchant I'm looking for. And just a couple minutes later, it's up to 10 buckets of blood. Slower now, but still by no means a uh, wimpy process. Not when it comes to blood and slime, which are, well, pig iron and slime, effectively. Which are products that I'll only need occasionally. Well, slime I need pretty consistently. But the amounts it's generating should be pretty sufficient, I think. 
Okay. So, I need to make... I think that should be the correct amount. Nope, I was wrong. On many levels, I was wrong. And I am out of those. Okay. Well, let's just fix that real quick. My misclicks cost me another igniter use. Oh well. And from there I just need 36 of those. And I'm going to need 28 of those. It's kind of tragic that I have this so thoroughly memorized by this point, isn't it? Twenty of those. Sixteen of those. And four of those. Refractory oven. This is just another refractory device that is specifically for food. I, I will put that over there. It's probably time to refill the old kiln anyway. Yes, so now we can take that lovely pile of steaks in the making and turn them into steaks in actuality. Hmm. It takes two minutes. Okay. That's unfortunate. So, well, it's eight at a time. So I would need to do math on whether that or furnace would be better. But in the meantime, let's make a couple more. Let's see, I have one already. So this would be four more to five, six, seven, eight. And I'm gonna need more of those, aren't I? Nope, no I'm not. And that was in this, I think. Excellent. Okay. I guess I took the charcoal flakes out at the exact wrong time. There. That's better. And in the meantime, how many leather do I need to make patterns? I, I, I apologize. I, I uh... I got distracted uh, making uh, making up for a resource deficiency, I suppose. I just need four. Let's make two sets. I believe it was nine tool rods per. And just grab a load of wood. Excellent. It's very hard to have too many blank patterns. It's just one of those things that has so many wonderful little uses. Let's put our tank of blood down here, near our drain, because that's how we'll use it. And now I need to start the whole process over again, which means I'm going to need more stone for all the bricks. Let's put on the fancy pants and let's just buy a couple stacks of it.
Villagers always closing the door in my face in these high traffic areas. Yeah. And I think that actually in the refractory oven, if you pile up too much fuel and let it burn longer, then it can actually become charcoal or burnt food or something. I know that can happen in a campfire at least, and these are both pyrotech devices, so I wouldn't be surprised if they share the overcooking mechanic. So yeah, maybe a furnace would be wiser. Any other uses for this? Can make uh, potash. Yeah, see, burned food. And that's effectively just a, a charcoal type thing. Now, if I leave the leather on the drying rack, is that going to cause a problem? Because I've seen that in some packs, too. Nope. It's just going to take a long time to turn into leather, though. Yeah, let's just keep the cycle going on there and start building up a nice supply of leather once more. And just about any other meat should work for that, so... Get some more lava cooking. And let's put away what stone we can and take these two stacks and turn them into some uh, into some bricks curses curse you and your many possible drops And my pitiful inventory management, which is the true fault, as it usually is. Okay. So. Let's see. First staff gonna need... 36. 36 is what I'm gonna need. And then I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four. And that should do it. Oh, and also going to need 28 of this. It is time to start putting more pulp on the processor. It's also probably close to time to make more refractory brick. And time to crush up some more iron. Thank goodness we can mostly work 24-7 now. Mostly. Hopefully. I'm still waiting for that deadly assassin Enderman. And then eight more of this. Steal a wood chip. No, don't pulp them yet. And now the relatively easy part. Have to break out the venerable crafting axe. Oh so wise, oh so elegant. Share with us your wisdom, O oh, axe that is unlike other axes. Right, and I need six more. I always forget that. 
and then from there it becomes significantly easier. And from there it's most easy of all. Okay, now we have that, we have that, we just need two of those, two glue, three wool. And a bunch of wood. Yeah, sure. Let's empty this out bit by bit. And I think that was just on here. Yep. And the carpenter's workshop... doesn't seem to use any liquid whatsoever. Paintings. Nice. So we can put that, I don't know, over here. It's going to need a needle and thread. That's basically a bunch of durable twine, a single tier two. And we can make bowstrings a lot easier now. Yes. Good thing we made a extra pattern. Because now we can just... Oh, that doesn't even cost three. It just costs a single string. Yeah. Considering the other recipe for this was this. That's a bit of a time save. Okay, and that was a single tier 2 tool rod. It's going to be time for me to make more of those soon. It was... it's going to be time to harvest the hemp field for the first time in a while soon, too. We're kind of running down on all the resources all at once. It's turning into a lovely little crash. But that is just how life do. Okay, and three diamonds. And, of course, it can't recognize that. Thankfully, needle and thread is not one you need to make very frequently. Okay. And with that, we can now take, say... 16 of these, arrange them like so, and we get lots of carpets to sell to the Normans. And that should clear their production deadlock, unless they demand more than one type of carpet. Which, did they have a demand for red carpet? They might have. Start gathering up some red flowers. Just in case. Are you okay? You have fun with that. Hmm. I think I saw one of the village children with a disease. That's usually an indication that a mob spawned somewhere. Cursed journey map for not giving me far enough vision. Is that a setting I could play with anywhere in there? Okay, so that's carpets. They do. They have a demand for red carpet. Okay. So, red carpet is probably just going to take red wool. Yep. And we can make that easily. I thought we could make that eight at a time. No. Okay. Well, how much did they need? You need 15, so five crafts of it, because it produces three at a time. And that means I'm going to need ten wool in total. And these in the mortar turn into just one at a time. Okay. Shouldn't be hard to find ten red flowers. 
Yeah, we're already well over halfway there. Eight. Nine. And ten. And let's buy some more wool while we're in the area. Yeah, I've had F7 mode on this whole time. Just in case any... And let's pick up some pumpkins too. I'm going to be using... Uh, in the next stage, we're going to have to journey deeper into the abyss. And it is dark down there. So I'm going to need an underwater lighting source. And jack-o'-lanterns are the cheapest and lightest I've got. I could go mining for glowstone. And since I have silk touch, I'm getting full blocks. But it also weighs 10 kilograms per block. And it's really annoying taking it out of your inventory nine at a time. When you're probably going to be using lots of it. Let's get some water. If it'll let me get water. There we go. So yes, I think I'm going to have to start a uh, pumpkin patch. And start farming up some pumpkins for jack-o'-lanterns. But, in the meantime, let's just take ten of those. Let's take our red flowers and crush them up. Oh. But those were blatantly red flowers. Why? Okay, well... You, O oh, traitorous lie of a die can just go away and we'll find two more poppies right here. That was just a bizarre... I, I have no idea what was going on there. In any case, then just take these, take those, take those, 15 red carpets, and we even have some more leather nice and ready for us. Yes, it's very slow on the drying rack, but we use leather relatively rarely. I just want to have a source of it that isn't dependent on those suddenly unreliable cow farmers. that they should be able to upgrade the church nope they want yellow too of course of course what was I thinking thinking I was done ten yellow flowers should be significantly easier yeah these things are everywhere It better be freaking yellow. Dandelion yellow has been a thing in Minecraft for ages. Okay, dies achieved. And no, it probably isn't a huge deal that like they probably aren't going to deadlock on something else for a good long while. Y you saw that they were, they've were they been upgrading other buildings. It's just, it's nice to keep as many slots open as possible. Hold off that deadlock for as long as you can, because millionaire village work is one of those things that you want to activate it early and keep it going, and just have it going in the background, because it takes for... It takes a good long time for them to fully develop the village. So, ten of those. 
so clearing out potential deadlocks is just a smart thing to do. And this is earning us a little bit of money. It's probably time to cycle their windows, too. I don't think I looked at that when I was up in there. Yeah, you can tell where all their quarries are. Because of all the smoke plumes. Alright, 15 of those, and yep, it is indeed time to cycle the windows. Just like so. How are we doing? We are almost there on the gold. And do you have everything you need? Do you have everything you could possibly want for the best, awesomest church? Yep. They are doing it. And I am probably going to have to relight the entire dang church once they're done. That's probably the real source of the monsters, is them upgrading buildings and throwing torches around. They are a troublesome lot, but they help us in some ways. Sometimes. Let's just get rid of this cider. Cider isn't what I want anyway. If I wanted a drink, I would want Calva. Good lord, it's full. Right, I was going to upgrade that to have a bigger tank. Good time to get that done. I imagine the Seared Stone is long done. Okay. Brickify. Yeah, I have more than a stack on me. So let's spend some of it before I completely clean out the output chest. Yeah, I'm going to have to pretty well deconstruct this entire merchant stall. Pity. Or at least the back and sides of it. I guess we can keep the storefront. This is now just the blood store. Except you ain't paying for it. It's just kind of generated for free. Given out for free. It's a charitable organization. It's a blood bank! Yeah! We've made a blood bank. Isn't that just a good deed? Don't you feel beautiful? Knowing that knowing that people can get the care they need. Okay. Let's get all the garbage out of there. And yep. We kind of need to clear some space. So, how far do I want to extend this? Maybe... Yeah, that far. That far looks good to me. Kind of keep it within dimension of the merchant stand. For really no reason other than just aesthetics, I suppose. Oops. And I need to make a seared glass side for this so that the interior is not spawnable. Ah, yes. Actually. Yeah, that helps a little. Come on, game. You aren't helping at all. Not with this attitude. Yeah. 
and more. Why? I imagine that all of you watching, like, are now rewinding and seeing how long that guy was stalking me, creeping up on me. I'll have to review the footage too and see where he was coming from. Okay, why you know. to be on that level. Yeah, it needs to be on that level all the way around. My bad. You'd think I would know how to build a smeltery by now. Okay, is that better? That's much better. So, the capacity in total, yeah. We are going to have a nice amount of blood stored up in there. Just get rid of all this. Seriously, where? Where was that zombie finding the opportunity? Oh, and now over there in the... Okay, need to remember that for later. Later being after I make it daytime again. And maybe after I warm up a bit from freezing to death. Okay. I think that's the merchant stalls. Needed to check them today anyway. Yep, yeah, they upgraded the stalls. Messy, messy villagers. Really, they should be paying me for this service. They need to light their own damn buildings. And unfortunately, this is a state of chaos that will prevail until the village is fully upgraded. Or until we do something that causes Millinaire to break. I suppose I could have bought my dyes from this guy. Let's buy a few more pumpkins to get the seeds going a bit faster. Yeah. So, if I need dyes in a hurry, check the merchant stalls. That's good to know in the future. The glass makers stock it too, but you don't want to deplete them. They are actually making use of it. And yeah, I need to get some sort of building block to take a look at the roofs. are just a little bit aggravating sometimes. All this nice new big marketplace and only one merchant in today. That's just depressing, I tells ya. Looks like the roof is safe, at least. That isn't always the case. Yep, 
Yeah, getting to the next days, we are almost definitely going to have some encounters with the monsters that I do not want to see. Because there's just so much chaos going on right now. But I put it off enough. All these fun little experiments really are just kind of me spinning my wheels and putting it off. So let us work on advancing the plot. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it's been a short enough episode. So this takes a horrific amount of iron and it's going to take eight obsidian cogs. And it's also going to take these nanomachine frames, which are themselves horrific. So, let's make sure I've got them on uses. Put that in recipe as well. Yes, good. So let's start with the nano machine frames. The good news is we get a lot of them per craft. The bad news is they are still not a fun craft. Do I have any pig iron ingots? I, I do have the four pig iron blocks. But do I have any ingots whatsoever? Not looking like it. Well, can I break up the blocks anywhere? Not looking like it. Well. Okay, so. That'd be 45, 50. And 50 clay balls. What's the best way to split that up? I guess. Get as much of it into block form as possible. That'll do. And from there, so we take our two buckets of blood and you can put liquid into the smeltery just by right-clicking on the drain with it. Bucket O blood, lovely. So that's two buckets of blood, 50 blocks of iron. We'll let that melt first. And then, and then it should be 25 box, blocks of clay, not what I laid out. Oops. Well, We'll just make use of this. So that'd be 4, 8, 12, 24, 25. And the rest we will just simply start to burn. And hopefully that should make a nice even amount of uh, pig iron. If I've done my mental math right, which is not a guarantee. I guess while I'm waiting I can start yes the way you get pumpkin seeds is just like this and a stack is probably good enough well I don't know for sure how many I'm gonna need let's get a couple let's get two stacks of seeds and eh, no I'd feel silly if I didn't have enough yep that is perfectly to ratio so two buckets of blood 50 iron 25 clay will get you 50 pig iron which I am just going to turn into ingots for my machine frames and while that's happening, no, I 
can't really. Well, no, I have that Norman Ho. I have that Norman Ho somewhere, don't I? Yeah, I remember you. Do I still have seared bricks in my? Yes, I do. Let's get rid of you. Okay, so bucket of water. And just over here. Two, three, four, five. So it seems that we get, like, silk touch behavior on our dirt now for some reason. Well, we get standard Minecraft behavior on our dirt now for some reason, I should say. Instead of pirate tech behavior. Maybe it's a factor of mining level. And, like, once our mining level gets high enough, other things will start behaving as they should, too. I can hope. of pumpkin farming. Then it should start with this row. And then skip two rows. Do this row. That probably isn't right. Oh well. Yeah, that almost definitely isn't right. Eh, it's good enough. And yes, I way overestimated. I should have turned most of those pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns. Oh well. I'll I'll just have to browse by the wiki and look up what the real optimal pattern is. Yeah, there's still I'm still getting occasional red dots over yonder. Is it that tree? Could be that tree. Let's destroy that tree. you're a tall one. You couldn't make it easy on me, could you? Any more wood hiding in there? Not looking like it. And yes, it is time to go because we are well outside of the safety zone. Cowardice, I know, but I am not fighting anything until I have more lives. Because it would be so easy for an Enderman to teleport in and get me again before I could reach the safety of the sea. And that would be it. That would be... That would be permadeath. So yes, we are being a little bit cowardly. Deal with it. Gotta love that aqua speed, though, don't you? Pity I can't have it fully kitted out and have the uh, O2 tank. There is an add-on that technically 
should allow you to breathe for 60 seconds underwater, but unfortunately better diving breaks it. Hmm. Okay, I'm game. You can just wait in there for now. Just let the clay continue to flow. It is probably time to cycle the charcoal, too. Yeah, probably meaning it's been time for like a half an hour, dumbo. Dumbo. But this is why we yearn for fully automated processes so that they keep on going even when I forget about them. But such shall not be within our realm for a little while. Speaking of things that keep on going even when I forget about them, look at that. Okay, so four of those. All four of those. And four steel. And then I just need the eight cogs of varying level. So, to make those cogs, I'm going to need a full stack of sticks, ain't I? Yep. It's time to put some more. You know what I should do? Because this gets clogged easily, I should put some stashes here for the various intermediary products. Yeah. So what's it take to make a stash? It just takes a lot of slabs, essentially. Slabs and paste. Mm -hmm. Easy enough. And... Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, tarred boards. Can I make those in a workshop? Yes, I can. All right. So just grab 25 of those into tarred boards, please. Thank you. I do just like it when I have to be more specific than a button press, but such is life. And then it should be 12 of these. Yep, if we're going to make some stashes, we might as well make them big stashes. Just big old hanging Fu Manchus. And yes, this should serve to block wood chips still, hopefully. And, yeah, let's just let that start to process down. And we'll work our way down to sticks bit by bit. And start throwing things in these. And we'll see if any wood chips pile up on them. In any case, I need... Eight logs, I do believe, to get started on the cogs. Yep. Oh, nope. I didn't need a full stack of sticks, I just needed 32 of them, and 32 compressed sticks. Which is still not a... Yes, that, that effectively is boards, pretty much. Ugh, I hate that they don't stack. And next we're going to need a bunch of flint. No, we're going to need a bunch of stone. We are going to need a bunch of, st of flint down the line, though. But 
So let's see here. Each one of these breaks down into four, right? Right, so it's just one per. Just as easy as that. And then 32 pebbles, which I might not have. Okay, time to lay out some cobble. And take a uh, less discerning approach to it. Okay, so it ain't the silk touch. It must be a factor of mining level. Yes, thank you for making me paranoid at first, lucky cobblestone drop. I think because yeah these the three of these will make 24 and I'm gonna need a whole stacks worth so I need to go hunting for more flint do I have an easier recipe for it yet nope I really should offload these onto something well it doesn't matter I only need a couple of slots for flint hunting Yep, it's looking like these are being just fine with the system as it is. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Let's keep some... Let's keep some slabs, but mostly... Mostly throw them right back in. We need to switch to our air tank. I'm going to start drowning if I'm wandering around mining and distracted. You know what? I had a thought. Maybe the redstone signal has to be underneath this thing. So can this be free floating? No, it cannot. Can it stand on top of a torch? No, it cannot. So we would need a redstone block if the problem is that uh, it needs the re it needs the signal coming from below. Oh well, it was a nice thought. Let's just go and get us some, hopefully, get us a lot of flint. Uh, let's find a nicer source. Like a nice plane like this, yeah. Let's turn F7 mode off, because that blinking would drive me nuts after a little while. I suppose I could make an excavator if I really wanted to be decadent about doing this, but I think this shovel is sufficiently speedy. Yeah, look at how we're doing already. 
and this hasn't even really tapped into the durability very far. Always remember, any time you start to go into a dry area, make sure you get light down right away. The Gru is not your friend. And while it wants to play, you don't want to play with it. Okay, so what I can do here is... Get rid of all that. And uh, let's limit ourselves to three of uh, Diorite that many of flint and just let that act as a natural filter and everything else shall be disregarded as it so rightly should Even out of water, this mine's pretty quick. At least through gravel. We're earning a pretty penny of experience, too, doing this. It'll probably be forever and a day before I can enchant anything, but when I do, if I don't manage to lose all these levels through derpery, by gum I'll have a lot of enchanting to do. Unless I go around replacing these copper handles with something else. Even if Silk Touch isn't working, Sponge would give me more durability. Okay, that's probably sufficient for the moment. Yeah, even only wearing two pieces of the set, we still move pretty fast in our armor. Especially since I think the diving tank makes us move a little bit faster just on its own. Or maybe that's the next tier's worth. What it does. We've got a good supply of flint that should last for a little while. And it looks like our wood chips are still nicely laid out for us to easily harvest. Let's make use of them. I was running low on pulp anyway, I think. And let's assemble all this diorite. It's fast and easy to get more now, so. And let's just immediately smooth it. If the game will not crash from that. Seriously, you are doing that a lot lately, game. You're starting to worry me. I remember what regrowth turned into in the end. And I think Millinaire was by and large responsible for it, and Millinaire's a big part of this one. Okay. So, a stack-ish of flint clay... That should be three of these. Or not not flint clay, but shards, yes. Words. They are a thing, and I should know how to use them. But we're all bitterly disappointed with reality. Okay, 
Next. Oh, that's exactly enough bone. Oh boy. I need to restock on bone. Getting a little bit boned. But thankfully it's relatively easy from here now that we have everything we need, hopefully. Okay, and from there it's straight up iron shards. So let's crush a good amount of... Yep. Just replenish our supply of ingots. Is that our last granite anvil? It is. Go away. Well, that means it's time to make some more backup anvils. And let's make these guys. Yeah, I think that uh, the ironclad anvil has all the same uses. Let's see, 27. Oh, no. Granite Anvil has a couple other uses beyond it. Hmm. But can it do the uses that I need? Like, yeah. Okay, so it makes... Huh. Interesting. But, it, yeah, it splits those to stone rods. Can it split... Huh. Bone block. If I can find a source of that. Hmm. Yes, it splits up iron blocks, it splits up. Okay, it looks like it does everything I need. So, let's make just a couple of those. So... Unfamiliar item? That's just smooth granite, right? Yeah. It's, it's just a chiseled variant of smooth granite. You, you can't fool me, game. Well... Let's... Let's just make one and see where it goes. Well, maybe not one, because these turn into two each, right? Yeah. So, we'll make two. And we'll see if we inevitably run into... Uh, if and when we inevitably run into the two pages worth of things that it can't do, then we will we will just appreciate that situation I think those are the ones and then over here there iron clad anvils in any case so iron char I think that these go four at a time. Shard. Iron. Yeah. So I just need eight of them. Much more merciful than uh, the flint and bone, which are honestly much harder to obtain. Mercy is a bit misplaced. Whew, this is a bit exhausting, isn't it? I need to find some more gold blocks. Okay. I think we're getting up into the tiers we're going to need for the... Yep, yep, yep. It's just... It's just going to have to turn half of them into diamond after this. We are almost there on the first half of the problem. Silly of me not to get rid of this. 
And, yep, that's just a few diamonds. Let's just get a single stack of four onto the bashy bashy. And that should do the trick. And you see, even if I would have to do this very, very rarely, the fact that I might have to do it more than once is turning me off from mechanical hoppers. Because I have earned a hatred of this whole crafting process through this entire ordeal. Okay. In any case, nano machine frames are going to require four bronze, four brass, and four steel. And that is finally, finally. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, it needs the sawmill blade too. Of course it does. Of course it does. Well, that should at least be, thankfully, easier. At least we only need to do it to one of them. If I recall, that one demanded four ingots. And from there, it's relatively smooth sailing. Just work our way up the tiers. Try not to cry any tears of our own. And a boop. Nano machine frames. These have a few different uses. Yes, if we wanted to heat our base the fancy tough as nails ways with the heating coils. I think these have the same range as the tinder, so um, yeah, don't do that. And thankfully, this will translate into quite a lot of machine frames over time. But now it's just another batch of eight more cogs. Oh boy. And I am pretty dead exhausted, so we'll be doing that one tomorrow. Well, today today we at least got some science done. And it, it was bloody good science, too, if I do say so myself. Yes, we have our first infinite resource generator. Oh, almost 50 bucks of blood. Goodness gracious. I need to make some drains and some tanks and empty that out faster and start processing that into, I don't know, something like coagulated slime. If I take blued and I cast it out into, no, that's just into those. Can that compress in any way? No. So, yeah, it looks like the most... Def oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Okay, workstation, workshop. Okay, blood slime block. Fine. Can that be decrafted back in it? No, not really. Can be turned into these congealed blood blocks. Which, if I wanted to make myself slime boots... Or a slow fall cloak. Or that. Yeah. Yes, the uh, the slime slingshot and slime boots are one means of moving really, really fast over land. And they also cancel all fall damage. And uh, there is a Tinker's Armor modifier that does the same thing for much cheaper. Not the slingshot part of it, but the 
boots part of it. In any case, yes. I think... Okay, first of all, the hammer needs a name. Um... Hmm. Yes. Second of all, I think that my advanced tinkers tools I'll just keep on here because those are very occasional use tools. Yes. In any case, yes, yes, yes. That is enough for today. Tomorrow we'll be making those machine frames. And I think from there it's just a hop, skip, and a jump up to making um, up to making the um, let's see it's useful for a couple of things oh, detector oh the chef's workshop okay interesting uses the whole three of them <sighs> but yes from there, it'll just be some even more of those. Yeah, that, that sounds like a tomorrow problem. That sounds like a tomorrow problem for me. In the meantime, enjoy yourselves. Good night.